Nearly each one of you has taken antibiotics in your life at least once. But what are antibiotics? How do they work? And what is antibiotic resistance? These questions will all be answered in this video. The target of this medication are microorganisms, more precisely bacteria. Once treated with the correct antibiotics, the bacterial infection is eliminated. In general, antibiotics do not function against viruses or fungi. Instead, they are specifically directed against bacteria. The first antibiotic was discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming in 1928. He observed a spot in his petri dish where bacteria did not grow around fungi. These fungi produced an antibacterial substance which killed the surrounding microbes. It is commonly known under the term penicillin, which would later save millions of lives. This discovery is often described as one of the greatest victories ever achieved over disease. How do antibiotics work? There are multiple types of antibiotics and also different mechanisms of action. Some antibiotics disrupt the cell membrane integrity. Others interfere with essential metabolic pathways or inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. Again, others inhibit protein or cell wall synthesis. Altogether, they have one in common. They target essential processes in the cell and prevent bacteria from spreading, either through killing them directly or inhibiting their growth. This video will demonstrate some of these mechanisms of action. One class of antibiotics inhibits the cell wall synthesis. The bacterium has a cell membrane and also a cell wall, which consists of peptidoglycan. These are sugar molecules interlinked with peptide bonds. More closely, a bacterial cell wall looks like this. Without the essential peptide bonds, the cell wall becomes extremely instable. As a consequence, the cell can even burst due to the high osmotic pressure inside. But how is the cell wall synthesized? An enzyme called transpeptidase catalyzes the reaction necessary to crosslink peptidoglycan. This mechanism is the target of an antibiotic that we already know, penicillin. Penicillin belongs to the group of beta-lactams and what they do is they inhibit the activity of the transpeptidase. No transpeptidase activity means no cell wall synthesis. The cell wall becomes instable and bacteria are eliminated. Therefore, most antibiotics of the beta-lactam family are considered bactericidal. Since mammalian cells do not have any peptidoglycan, these antibiotics do not interfere with human cells. Other antibiotics can inhibit the protein synthesis. The bacterial mRNA needs to be translated into protein. Ribosomes are the responsible catalytic machinery of translation. They synthesize a polypeptide chain which will fold into protein. When we take a closer look at the bacterial ribosome, it consists of two subunits, the larger 50S and the small 30S subunit. Tetracycline is an antibiotic that interferes with the small 30S subunit. tRNAs can no longer bind to the ribosome and protein synthesis is inhibited. This does not directly kill the bacterium, however, it depletes them of protein required for growth. This mechanism is therefore considered bacteriostatic. How can this antibiotic specifically inhibit the translation of bacteria but does not interfere with our own protein synthesis program? Mammals, including humans, have different ribosomal subunits, a 60S and a 40S subunit. Upon medication, we can translate our mRNA without any problem. Some antibiotics target one step before translation. These subtypes can inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. The bacterial DNA is usually transcribed by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. It synthesizes mRNA in a process called transcription. 
an antibiotic called rifamycin can inhibit the enzyme activity of RNA polymerase. This will stop mRNA synthesis and with this indirectly also protein production. Rifamycin does not inhibit the mammalian RNA polymerase. Upon medication, nucleic acid synthesis is not affected in human cells. The use of antibiotics such as penicillin first became available during World War II. Numerous soldiers came into hospitals with infections after battle wounds and the death rate was significantly reduced due to antibiotics. Antibiotics were therefore called wonder drugs. In summary, one can say that antibiotics revolutionized medicine. However, today they are heavily overused. Not only for humans. They are also administered to livestock, keeping the animals healthy and routinely prevent disease. Overusing antibiotics promotes antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance is generally caused by simple mutations in the bacterial DNA. Mutations occur almost all the time in all organisms. But when an antibiotic is used and one microbe developed a resistance towards this drug caused by a random mutation, this drug becomes ineffective. Then other antibiotics have to be taken into consideration. They might work, but again, the high selection pressure on the microbes might promote mutations which could lead to multiple drug resistance. In the worst case, no antibiotic would be effective anymore and the result would be a super germ, which might cause the next big pandemic. Multi-resistant microbes are already among us. To not draw a future too dark, let me tell you, science is permanently working on the problem by developing new antibiotics. However, we need to be more responsible with the use of antibiotics in the future. Thanks for watching. If this video was interesting and you could learn some new things, you might like this video. And if you want to see more scientific videos, check out the channel and also make sure to subscribe. See you next time.